In this video, I'm going to show you how to turn your favorite websites, even with enhanced functionality, into desktop apps natively on Linux. Let's talk about a phenomenal piece of software called Native Fire. Now, you see behind me, now it's not Native Fire as in you're lighting fire, it's the native fire is in something that makes something else native. This helps non-technical folks like you and me to really quickly from the command line, create an electron application that pulls in all the resources from a website or from a web app and runs natively on the desktop without having to re-authenticate the user, without having to worry about clicking on links and opening up new tabs. If you click on a link that is outside of that app's domain, it just opens up your browser separately. Uh, so you don't have to worry about having to re-authenticate or have insecure unclosed sessions in your browser. This is considered a no-no, right, for personal security. So this process is going to help you be a more secure computer user. So let's jump right in and take a look at exactly what's needed. Right here, this is the GitHub How to Read Me. And it shows that you can create applications like this, like Facebook Messenger, which itself is not the most secure thing to have open in several browsers. There could be some serious vulnerabilities. Same with WhatsApp and then other applications or web apps that might be really popular. I'll show you some that I already have created. And the top one is just here, Twitter. I can also, there we go. I'm opening up Twitter. You can see I've got the theming already going, their new dark theme. I can hit the F11 key and go full screen right there. Just as you'd expect, it behaves a lot like any other web view application, right? So pretty amazing stuff. I'll hit F11, F11 again and go from full screen. But I love how fast and responsive it is here. Sure, ads are still present in Twitter and ads would be present on, say, other platforms like Facebook or on Instagram if you wanted to turn them into a native app for Linux. But that's beside the point. The point is that it's extremely responsive and extremely helpful. So yeah, let's jump right into this. Let me uh, show you as well really fast. When I go to my dash right here, hit the Windows key and start typing in Twitter, it shows up in my dash as well. So Ubuntu already acknowledges this. We're going to go above and beyond what the standard tutorial would show you. So I can click on that. And again, it's here, uh, right here on my launcher, right on my desktop launchers. So for it to be here on the desktop launcher or to be on both the dash as well as the desktop toolbar, that means that we have to do a little bit of extra work. So I'm excited to show you how that works. I'm going to go a little bit above and beyond the tutorial that's available just here in GitHub or anywhere else. So I did a little bit of extra work to make sure you guys can get the, the best experience. Without further ado, let's talk about installation, what you're going to need. You're going to need a computer that's running Linux. It's going to also need to have Node.js, at least version 8 or higher. And then some dependencies that'll make your life easier would be Image Magic and Wine. If you have a relatively recent version of Ubuntu, on a laptop, which is what I'm using for this tutorial, then it's going to be easy. So npm install native fire dash g. Now I had a problem with npm on my install, unlikely that you will. For some reason I did, and I'm not totally sure what that is, but some part of my system's configuration made that difficult. I found a workaround. You'll be able to also, so stay persistent on the initial steps. It seems really simple unless something has gone wrong with your system, but I'm just here to tell you that even if something has gone wrong with your initial installation, you can probably fix it by by uh, hitting up DuckDuckGo and, or Stack Overflow and, and asking, hey, I've got a problem installing NPM or Node.js, and you'll find a workaround. All right, so usage, it says to just use native fire, and then in double quotation marks, put the domain name that you want to turn into a desktop application. But I think that we need to go beyond that. Here it says native fire will attempt to determine, you can give it its own custom name by using the modifier dash dash name or uh, hyphen hyphen name and then in double quotations whatever the name of your app is and then in separate double quotations the domain itself so it says api documentation or just hit up dash dash help of course within the terminal to see what other options you have here's what i've done so we pull up adam editor and then we will open up a, a terminal window here in just a second yikes it's not very pleasant so uh, Adam Editor, and I've got this already lined up. So I've got the dash P Linux. I'm telling you what operating system I'm using with dash P and then dash A. 
x64, so I'm telling you the architecture of the system that I'm about to make the app for, and then I'm putting in the domain name without any double quotation marks, and I'm putting in HTTPS. I want to make sure that, I, uh, that I'm securely connecting to this site. So I'm putting in HTTPS, and then mind your biz. We're going to try the mind your biz uh, home site. So fingers crossed, I have not done this, guys. This is, I'm, <laughs> we're doing it live. So just so you're aware, not, not faking anything here. First thing, I'm just going to say that for, oh, what am I doing? <laughs> CD. I'm going to list the contents of my uh, menu there, right there, top directory, and show you that I've got my slap, snap folder by having the snap store installed. And then I've got my downloads, everything else. But I've got a folder here, a directory called Electron Apps. So let's CD into Electron Apps, and I'll show you what I have there. That's where the folders that native fire creates are stored and i'm just it's just for ease of use i'm putting them there it's easier so i've got my facebook folder because i do use the facebook ui or i do use facebook in order to set up ads for both facebook and instagram and then i've got twitter so i call it, called it twitter desktop let's go ahead and use native fire from within this directory in the terminal so Control shift v to create a brand new application See, it says preparing Electron app didn't take long at all. Let's go ahead and list the contents again. You see, we've got a new directory there, mind your biz. Let's jump into that and show the contents there. There should be an executable. There you go, mind your biz as an executable. But we need to make it executable by sudo chmod plus x mind your biz. All right, so I'm going to put in my password for root and done. Let's try running that to see what it does. Here's mine, your biz. And ta-da, that is the mine, your biz site. Of course, it's loading, <laughs> it's loading at the speed of the website, uh, but I've got various other launcher links right there. Got the shop functionality that's on the same domain. So it should bring you, yeah, right there to the shop. So this is a secure way to check out Mind Your Biz. Now, do I think this is what everybody should use? Uh, I don't know. I mean, yeah, probably. Yeah, totally. You should make a custom Mind Your Biz app for Linux so that you, uh, you've you got something like this to launch from the desktop. Uh, that said, what's great about this is that if I use any kind of a VPN, I can assign this app into a split tunnel. Maybe it's an application that I'm not worried about having IP tracked. So I don't, I just want to have better speed, right? It could be a video streaming app of some sort or a video streaming site of some sort that I'm just not worried about. So I may want to do split tunneling there, or I may want to use a separate VPN configuration to connect to a different VPN server so that I'm split tunneling through a different country, if you know what I mean. So maybe it's Amazon or Netflix or something. And so I want to have a separate app that's just for video consumption. There's a really good reason for having, say, Netflix on Linux or Amazon Prime Video on Linux configured in this way. So you can bypass, you can bypass your VPN in ways that are most advantageous to you. So we know this works. This is great. Let's do some customization. Because right now, when we look at the dock. That doesn't have any kind of an icon. It doesn't look very useful just yet. So let's make it more useful now and let's make it launchable by search on the dash. So if I look for mine, oh, mines gives me the game mine. Your biz nothing. Okay, actually, it's showing me that also happens to be the name of my user here. So uh, that, that I'm logged into. So let's let's take this to the next level. Okay, and the next level is using main menu. Main menu should already come pre-installed on your Ubuntu system. So if it doesn't, I'll post a link in the description to how you can set that up manually. So let's take a look at this internet. I'm gonna create a new item right here within all my internet applications. You see I've got so many other handy things, a couple different web browsers, Opera, Brave, Firefox, and then all my other internet chat applications, stuff that I like to use. Though I will, I will be getting rid of Zoom very soon. Not very happy with that. But new item here, I'm going to call it uh, MYB home. And for the command, I'm going to navigate 
to that Electron Apps folder, now the Mind Your Biz subdirectory rather, and go to Mind Your Biz, the executable, which we made executable. I don't need to comment in any way, but right here, the icon, I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to also navigate to that subdirectory of Mind Your Biz. Now go to Resources, App, and oh, it did not pull an icon for me this time. For other more popular more popular services like Twitter or like YouTube or like Facebook or Netflix, as mentioned before, there should be an icon that it pulls or it should be able to pull art for you automatically. However, nothing stopping me from just going to my pictures and finding something else, right? So, hmm, what, what can I do here that's interesting? All right. That works. And I'll tab over. I'm actually kind of flying blind there because <laughs> there we go. I've got a nice t-shirt there. And that that item has already been added. So I'm going to go to my dash again. Go to MYB home. There it is. Now, if I need to, I can right click, add to favorites, and it will show up on my dock. So let me check out over here. There it is. MYB home and set it up here with my favorites. All right, guys, that is as easy as it gets. So to recap, you learned how to use the native fire plugin or native fire application to take a website that you commonly go to that usually requires authentication or that you definitely want to remain secure on. And you've now made it a, an electron application for the desktop. So it's now native, but it's pulling in resources from that URL and from that server. You also figured out how to make it native to your dash and native to the dock within Ubuntu. So you can launch it without having to go into a terminal and launch it uh, that way. So much more convenient for you. Guys, I hope this was helpful. Let me know down in the comment section what other kinds of videos you'd like to see along these lines. Would you like to see in the next video, for example, how to make Android applications run natively in Linux? All right, guys, thank you for hitting that subscribe button, being subscribed, hitting the bell icon so you're notified when new videos come out, watching all the way to the end of the video, and of course, spreading the news, inviting others, sharing is caring, guys. Thank you so much for being supportive. You're the reason I make this media. I love your face, and I will see you in the next one.